All right, everyone, so Borto 2 Blue Vortex has officially been released, and I am here to give you guys my review. Now, before we get to the review, guys, I do have to ask you that if you want to show your support for the channel, please hit the like button, share this video out there, hit the subscribe button if you're new, make sure to ring the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video, and please, guys, comment down below with whatever your thoughts are on this chapter. What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was okay? Whatever your thoughts are, just let me know about them in the comment section down below. Now let's go ahead and get to this chapter because we definitely have a lot to talk about because it seems like with chapter 4 of Borto 2 Blue Vortex, this intro to the story is officially over and it seems like moving forward, we are going to start getting the actual story because we basically have everything set up here in these four chapters of Borto 2 Blue Vortex. Now, in this chapter, we now know who the main enemy of the story actually is. We know the answer to a question that a lot of people have been asking ever since the Borto series has first started. Other than what the hell happened to Naruto, we finally know what happened to Sasuke. Where the hell is he? Why haven't we seen him so far in Borto 2 Blue Vortex? Why did Borto show up to the village alone? We finally have an answer to that question. As well as why does Borto have Sasuke's sword? Why does he have a cloak like Sasuke? That question does get answered in this chapter. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now the chapter pretty much starts off with where the previous chapter left off with Code in the Ten Tails dimension looking over the emaciated corpse of the Ten Tails thinking about the warning that Borto gave him about how if he doesn't get rid of the claw grimes, he is going to end up regretting it. And of course, while he is there, we once again see the toad that Borto implanted on him and basically telling Borto that he needs to hurry. And we get a statement from Borto, which is very interesting, saying that he's not as skillful as this as his grandfather, obviously referring to Minato. And while this is happening, Kawaki's looking over to him, asking himself, who is Borto talking to? And then we see what Borto is doing, which is that he is using the flying Raijin. So confirmation that Borto does indeed know how to use flying Raijin, but just as he said earlier, he's not as good as using it as Minato was. So I don't think we're going to see Borto basically becoming the second coming of the Yellow Flash. You know, he's not going to be zipping around the battlefield using flying Raijin to take out enemies, at least I'm guessing not right now. Maybe at some point in the future he's going to master it to the point where he actually can use it as well as Minato. But it seems like right now, according to Borto, he's not as skilled as using Flying Raijin as Minato or even Tobirama. And then, of course, when he gets there, Code is asking himself, how the hell did he get here? But then Borto immediately goes over to the cage where the Tentil is being kept and we see that it's not there anymore. And the Toad is basically telling him that it was there just a second ago. There's no way Code could have moved it. And then while this is happening, Borto immediately senses an enemy right behind him. And we see this enemy looking a lot like Bug, except unlike Bug, he actually has two Rinnegan in his eyes. And Code is wondering what the hell is going on. Why does this guy look so much like Bug? And we even cut back to the tree that we saw in the previous chapter that Bug is currently trapped in. And then Borto tells him that that's not Bug. What's in front of them is a divine tree. And then Code is confused. And then this new enemy immediately speed blitzes Borto. And we see why Borto was desperately trying to warn Code about how he needs to get rid of these claw grimes right now while he still has control over them because he knew that this was going to happen. He knew that what Code did to the Tentails was going to lead to them evolving to what we're seeing right here in front of us. Beings that are so strong that even Boruto with his new power after three years of training is still struggling against this one divine tree. And then Boruto tries to use a lightning style jutsu to get him off of him, but it seems like it does no damage. And then it immediately tries to attack Boruto again, but Boruto uses flying Raijin to get out of the way. And even after seeing this ability, this new enemy that looks like Bug is completely unfazed by it. And then Code is asking Borto to tell him what the hell is going on, but he's still reeling from the effects of Uzuhiko. And then Borto, in my opinion, kind of stupidly undoes Uzuhiko. And then Code is fine now because Borto realized that this enemy is so strong that he actually can't handle him 
on his own and that he actually needs Code's help. So even if Borto just had a chance to get rid of an enemy, he still realizes that what's in front of them right now is so strong that he actually needs Code's help in order to take it down. And Code is still confused, wondering what the hell happened to Tentails. And he's asking him if it's related to Bug being devoured by the Clograms and then turning into a tree. And then Code confirms that it's not just Bug, it's basically everyone who's ever been bitten by a claw grime and then turned into a tree will eventually have a being that's out there that looks like them, except a basically more powerful version of them. And then while they're having this conversation, they immediately sense another enemy, except this time it's floating right above them, basically looking a lot like Jigen. And while he's up there, he says it's Chakra says all life on a planet both current and in the past the divine tree is there to absorb all of that so basically telling us what ishiki already told us in boruto and Arto next generations that the divine tree or the fruit that grows out of a divine tree is basically chakra or crystallized chakra from every living being that has ever lived and died on the planet that the tree grows the fruit out of it also goes on to say that the divine tree exists solely to absorb chakra from every living beings and create a chakra fruit, or at least that's what the original intent was, but it changed the minute Code decided to interfere and inject his own chakra into the divine tree, or more specifically the Tentails, which we know is actually a seedling for the divine tree, and by Code doing what he did, he ended up giving it self-awareness, which again is what Boruto was trying to warn him of. And then we immediately see another Tentails, this one looking a little bit like Moegi. I originally thought when I saw the spoilers that this one kind of looked like Delta, and maybe it actually will be, but based on what we see later on in the chapter, it might actually be Moegi. And then this new Tentails, the one that looks like her, basically looks at Code and tells him that your destiny is basically to just continue to be used by someone else and that you have no control over your own life. Basically repeating to Code what Code told Akawaki when he fought against him in the forest back in Boruto Naruto Next Generations. And then we see the introduction of another new Tentails and this one catches Boruto's attention the most. And if you obviously see who this new Tentails actually looks like, you can understand why this one has Boruto's attention. But before we get to why Boruto is so worried about this one, we cut back to the Hokage office where Shikamaru and Kawaki are having a conversation about what actually happens, theorizing that Boruto and Code might actually be working together, and then in comes Sarada, and she's basically telling them that they're crazy and that they're jumping to these conclusions that are just completely false and incorrect, basically telling them that the simple answer is actually the answer. Code attacked Konoha, Boruto was protecting Konoha. That's it. That's the answer. And then Kawaki tries to basically go against her by saying that you need to remember that Boruto is an Otsutsuki. It doesn't matter what his motives are, whether he was protecting Konoha or helping Code, he is still an enemy that needs to be removed because he is an Otsutsuki. And then Sarda reminds him, well, that's kind of funny because you're an Otsutsuki too. And then Kawaki reminds her that I'm an Otsutsuki killing an Otsutsuki, which to me, I think it's really funny that he's saying this because in chapter two, the claw grime referred to him as an Otsutsuki, and he specifically said, don't call me that, and yet here he is calling himself an Otsutsuki, which I just thought was a little bit funny. And he reminds her that his power exists solely to kill other Otsutsuki, and then telling her what he told Naruto, that once I'm done, once I've killed every Otsutsuki, you're more than welcome to get rid of me. And then Shikamaru tries to calm both of them down and then is asking what the hell is going on with these claw grimes and Sarada tells him what she in a way told us, the audience, in chapter 3, that the people captured by these claw grimes are not dead, they're still alive. And again, reiterating that for a reason because of what gets revealed to us later on in this chapter. And then she tells them that based on what I overheard, Borto knows what's going on and we need to work with him because we need to know what's going on. If Borto knows what's going on, then we need to talk to him because we can't go off of our own instincts. We need information, which is, of course, very important. When you're in a situation where you don't know what's going on, you have to get your information, doesn't matter where it's from, if you want to be able to survive this. So she's basically trying to remind them of that. 
And Shikamaru basically surmised that that's why Boruto's chasing code, because he knows what's going on and he's trying to resolve it. And then we cut back to the Ten Tails dimension, and then Borto basically is readying himself, putting his hand on his sword, but the Toad is telling him that, dude, you need to get out of here, you're not going to survive this. And then the clone that Borto's focusing on notices what Borto's doing, immediately tries to go in for a sneak attack using Code's claw marks, ironically enough, against him transforms his right arm into a sword, tries to take off both of their heads, but they both manage to dodge, and then immediately using an attack that looks like a Chidori, and while he's doing this, we get a good look at his face, and he looks like Sasuke. So we have confirmation as to what happened to Sasuke during the three-year time skip. He was captured by the Claw Grimes, and now we have a Ten Tails that looks exactly like him, and using his attacks so we know that these claw grimes when they capture someone not only do we get a ten tails that looks like the people that have been captured but they also have access to their abilities which i am wondering if maybe that's the reason why kishimoto made the decision to destroy sasuke's rinnegan because this is what he had planned and he knew that if there was a ten tails version of sasuke who not only has two rinnegan in his eyes but also has the body of a ten tails the chakra of a ten tails and has the power that was given to him by hagoromo the amenita jikara it would just be too strong of an opponent to deal with and we know that Kishimoto at one point was struggling a little bit with a character like Madara because he said that he basically made Madara so powerful that he had no idea how to get rid of him and I'm wondering if maybe now he's trying to avoid writing himself into that kind of a corner by basically having Sasuke lose that very useful ability of Amenita Jikara so that when he does this he won't be running into a situation where Boruto is going against an enemy where it's obvious that he would lose considering all the advantage that they have over him. At least that's what I'm wondering is probably what happened. And then we see Boruto creating a Rasengo Nuzuhiko to counter the Chidori that was made by the Tentail Sasuke and it's basically completely nullified. So Boruto's new ability that got showcased in chapter 3 basically just got nullified by this new Tentail Sasuke. So once again, showing us that the power scaling has just gone completely up. If you thought it was crazy before, well, it's even crazier now because Boruto, for as strong as he is right now, Kishimoto basically showed us that Boruto still has a long way to go before he is in a place where he can actually challenge these new Tentails because the others are watching this and they are not phased by this at all. None of them are phased by Borto's display of power. It's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, you're a little bit strong, but you're not going to be a problem for us. And then immediately the Tentails that looks like Bug tries to attack Code. And then the Tentails that looks like Bug tries to attack Borto. Borto tries to block it with his sword but the Ten Tails bug captures it, and then Borto gets trapped in an Earth-style jutsu, which does look a lot like the one Moegi used to capture Amado, so maybe that's why people theorize that this is the Ten Tails equivalent of Moegi. And then while he's trapped there, Borto is asking Code to help him, and then Code in a way, does something smart because he realized that, wait a minute, these guys are going to catch you, eat you, and then grow a divine tree, which was always my goal, so I don't really need to do anything. And this is why I said that earlier, Boruto did something to me is a little bit stupid, but granted, it is understandable, because when he freed Code of Uzuhiko, he basically gave Code a chance to get out, and he and he eliminated a chance for him to get rid of an enemy. So that's why I said it was a little bit stupid, but understandable. And then when Borto manages to get away using Flying Raijin, we cut back to the Tentail Sasuke looking over at Borto. And I am wondering if maybe this is Kishimoto setting something up, like maybe the Tentail Sasuke recognizes Borto, and maybe he'll eventually evolve to the point where he starts to get Sasuke's memories. And while he may not be Sasuke himself, he'll start to have his memories and he'll start to maybe think like him. Because this is something that we've seen as a reoccurring theme in the Boruto manga, where we have clones of characters that already exist. And even though these clones might have the original's memories, they're not actually the original person. So I'm very, very curious to see 
where Kishimoto takes this character. I'm curious to see what he does with this. I am wondering, this is my prediction. My theory is that maybe this one is going to end up turning on the others because this one is not the same as, you know, the one that looks like Jigen and the one that looks like Bug and the one that looks like Mawegi. If this one is modeled after Sasuke using Sasuke's chakra, there's a chance we might see something happen with this one and maybe not so the others. And then when Borto manages to escape, we cut again to the one that looks like Jigen, telling us some very interesting information, saying that Borto was lucky, essentially, that he came when he did, because if he had come a little bit later, then it might not have ended so well for him, because according to him, because they only just recently awakened, because they only just recently became self-aware, their thirst for knowledge and their curiosity overcame their instinct to devour Otsutsuki. So essentially they don't really care if Borto got away or not because right now they're more focused on learning and more focused on satisfying their curiosity to gain knowledge. And that if they do meet up with Borto again, it might not end well for him. And then telling Borto again that it doesn't matter where he runs, it doesn't matter where he goes, He's not going to be able to escape his fate. So once again, reminding us of the whole discussion of fate and whether or not you can oppose it, which essentially was a theme in the original Naruto manga. Now we're seeing it being continued in the Boruto manga, the sequel story to Naruto. And then we cut to where Boruto ran off. He's basically sitting under a tree. And then while he's there, he is greeted by someone now we know this is the person who's been talking to him through the toad. And yes, it is who we all knew it was going to be. It's Kashin Koji, basically telling him what the hell was he thinking? Was he trying to destroy the planet? And I've seen so many people misinterpret the statement. And I honestly don't even know why, because I thought it was kind of clear what this actually says. He's basically telling him that if he had stayed there, then the Tentails would have eaten him, grown the divine tree, and the planet would have been destroyed because the divine tree would have absorbed all life on the planet and everyone would die, and the planet, including the planet itself. So I don't understand why so many people misunderstood that, saying that, oh, this means that Boruto can destroy a planet whenever he wants to. No, that's not what this statement is telling us. And then Boruto says, sorry, I panicked. And then Kashin Koji once again reminds him that we always knew that this was going to be a very high possibility and it doesn't change what they have to do at the end. They still have to fight. And then we get the revelation of what happened to Sasuke. During the three-year time skip, Sasuke was captured by the Claw Grime, presumably in an effort to save Boruto's life. He gave up his in order to protect him, and it ended with him turning into a tree, which is why we saw a Tentails version of him. Although the one thing that I do find interesting is that here, Sasuke has his eye closed, and the reason why I say that's interesting is because every time so far we've seen someone who has been turned into a tree by the Claw Grimes, they all had their eye open, and you saw this blank look in their eyes, like they're not actually there, but Sasuke here actually has his eye closed, and I do wonder why that's the case, because they wouldn't specifically have a panel focused on Sasuke having his eye closed, and then we get to see the full shot of the tree with Sasuke in there, and we still get to see his eye closed, and we get to see his right arm, and every other part of his body is all covered with a tree. Again, I do wonder if this was done on purpose by Ikimoto, because there's something that they have planned in the future. But that's pretty much where the chapter ends, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Overall, I thought this chapter was okay. I thought it was a good ending to this intro that we've been getting in Borto 2 Blue Vortex. I am wondering where the story is going to go from here. I'm wondering what the story is going to be with the Ten Tales versions of these characters that we all know. What's going to happen with them? What's going to happen to Ten Tails Sasuke? What's the story with him? Or what's the story with the actual Sasuke that we all know? The people who have been captured by the Claw Grimes are not dead. They are still alive, but there is a chance that they're not going to be alive for long because based on how desperate Borto was to get to the Tentails, not only did he know that the Tentails was eventually going to evolve, but maybe there's a chance that the people who are trapped inside those trees are not going to be alive for very long and they're maybe on a little bit of a time limit. Again, that's just theorizing. Maybe that's completely incorrect at all. 
But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think about this chapter? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below, guys. And please, again, if you want to support this video, if you want to support the channel, leave a like, share this video out there, subscribe if you have, and ring the bell for notifications and consider becoming a channel member. All you have to do is click the blue join button that is right next to the subscribe button and you can become a member, which is a great way to support the channel financially. And you'll be getting some perks that other subscribers don't actually have or other people who aren't subscribed don't actually have. So if you're interested, click the join button that is right next to the subscribe button and you can become a member and you'll be supporting the channel financially and you'll also be getting some perks. But with that out of the way, I'm gonna let you guys go and I hope I'll see you guys for Borto 2 Blue Vortex Chapter 5. Bye for now.